monthly webinar series of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. Tonight's topic, overturning the culture of sexual violence. My name is Jamie Simpson. I am a member of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement here in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I'm honored to be joined tonight by Penny Hess, Chairwoman of the African People's Solidarity Committee. Uhuru. Uhuru, Jamie. Good to and be. Uhuru to all of you out there. And I'm also thrilled to be joined by Jesse Neville, also a member of the African People's Solidarity Committee and the chair of the mass front of the APSC, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. Uhuru, Jesse. Uhuru, Jamie. Good to be here. Uhuru, comrades. And welcome to everyone who's tuning in tonight. If tonight is your first time tuning in to one of our webinars, thanks for joining us. And we encourage you to please share this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to our Uhuru Solidarity Movement YouTube channel and get notifications. And share this video as far and wide as possible on Facebook and any other platform. We appreciate it. Um, first of all tonight, I would like to salute the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman Omali Eshetela. Uhuru. <laughs> Chairman O'Malley leads the African People's Socialist Party, which is the vanguard, the advanced detachment of the worldwide struggle of African people fighting for revolution and socialism, organizing to liberate and unify Africa and African people everywhere under the leadership of the African working class and poor peasantry. Uhuru Chu Chairman, who is also our leadership in the Solidarity Movement. Right. We want to especially salute the Chairman for the historic world-changing 7th Congress of the African People's Socialist Party, over which he presided in Missouri for two weeks, bringing together African people from everywhere to unite under the banner of Vanguard. This monumental Congress began with the military color guard march to raise and salute the African national flag, which waved its beautiful red, black, and green 50 feet high above the African colony of North St. Louis. That is liberated territory, comrades. Yeah, absolutely. Indeed, the African People's Socialist Party is the vanguard of world revolution. And we also want to salute Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshatela. Uhuru, yeah. Uhuru, Deputy Chair. We want to salute this comrade for leading in the creation of dual power in the hands of African workers throughout the world, the visionary leader behind the economic work of the party that is building the foundation of a liberated, socialist, anti-colonial, African working class controlled black power economy. This is most sharply exemplified today by the Black Power Blueprint in St. Louis, a magnificent political economic project wherein Deputy Chair Ona went to St. Louis for a week and wound up staying for a year, leading the process of renovating a 9,000 square foot abandoned building into a beautiful Uhuru House Black Community Center in the heart of the impoverished African working class neighborhood on West Florissant Avenue. This project has been funded entirely by the support of people, including Africans, investing in their own future and white people like you, paying reparations to the African liberation struggle. I also salute Chairwoman of the African People's Solidarity Committee, Penny Hess. Who <laughs> She has been working in principled solidarity with black power under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party for the past 42 years, and who authored the profound book, Overturning the Culture of Violence. So we want to salute Chairwoman Penny Hess. Uhuru. Uhuru. Now, before we begin, we will be hearing from Chairwoman Penny Hess shortly. I'd like to turn it over to Jesse Neville to tell us a bit about the organizing and the uh, organization hosting this program tonight. Uhuru Jamie, I just want to join in saluting our leadership, Chairman Omali Shatella and Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella and the entire National Central Committee and membership of the African People's Socialist Party and the amazing Congress, as well as our Chairwoman of the African People's Solidarity Committee, Penny Hess, and also salute all of you for joining uh, this program tonight that is hosted by the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. And Uhuru means freedom in Swahili. The Uhuru Solidarity Movement is the organization of white people formed by and working under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Our job is to go into the white community and organize other white people like ourselves to stand in solidarity with the African community struggle for 
genuine political and economic power and independence and to reclaim control of their stolen resources and lives and the value of their labor. We believe that reparations are owed to African people and the African People's Socialist Party has given us the strategic assignment to build a mass movement of white reparations to African people. As the mass organization of APSC, which the chairman and the party founded in 1976, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement is a growing organization. We are currently building our annual Days of Reparations to African People, which are powerful events that feature Chairwoman Penny Hess, along with the keynote speaker, Chairman Omali Shatella, and other leaders of the African People's Socialist Party. There's already been incredible events in cities across the US, including St. Louis, Seattle, or Huntsville, Gainesville, uh, Florida, uh, St. Petersburg, Huntsville is in Alabama, which was in Senzella consignment, Gainesville and St. Petersburg here in Florida. We're heading to Philadelphia, we're gonna be in New York, we're gonna be in Boston, Portland, Seattle, there will be viewing parties in Asheville, and even one in uh, Perth, Australia, where Comrade George, who was on the previous webinar um, in September, was, uh, will be hosting an event with other comrades in Australia. And we are making plans to grow the Uhuru Solidarity Movement throughout Europe and South Africa, or occupied Azania, in this upcoming year, based on the call from the African People's Socialist Party to, to build, you know, unlike we've ever built before. So we are also building the Reparations Challenge campaign and working under the party's leadership to foment a mass popular culture of reparations to African people. And USM is already fast becoming the most popular organization for white people to join who want to change the world and be on the right side of history. Uhuru, thank you. Funding campaign coordinated by Chairwoman Penny Hess. And tonight we have a goal to raise $1,000 for the Black Power Blueprint. Uh, we're currently at $9,616. And with your help tonight, we are going to make it to $10,616. So the first phase of this campaign raised thousands of dollars for the renovation of the beautiful Uhuru House and you you were a big part of making that happen. Everyone who is watching tonight has contributed up to this point. And because of you and your support of these weekly webinars and the amazing Black Power Blueprint project, phase two then was able to go into effect with the demolition of two condemned buildings across the street from the new Uhura House to make room for the funding of a One Africa, One Nation marketplace, which will stimulate black community commerce uh, for and between African people, and a 50-foot flagpole also raised to prepare for the unveiling of the tremendous red, black, and green flag. We are now in stage 2.2 of the fundraising phase as the project gears up to renovate uh, the Boathouse building in St. Louis as the, at the site of the future Uhuru Jiko Community Commercial Kitchen, another fantastic dual power program that will serve as the seed of the independent African economy. And the seizure of power over the means of food production and distribution in the hands of the African working class, which is absolutely crucial. You can contribute towards this goal by going to blackpowerblueprint.org. Again, that site is blackpowerblueprint.org. And we appreciate everything you've done in the past and we appreciate everything you're going to do tonight. We know how serious our viewers and supporters are and we deeply appreciate that. And we wanna announce your donations and statements of solidarity throughout the program tonight. So we'll be doing that shortly. Jesse, back to you. Oh, for Jamie. <laughs> Well, I just want to unite with the call for everyone to go to blackpowerblueprint.org. You can start now. Start, start. Feel free to interrupt this program with your reparations, with your contributions to blackpowerblueprint.org. We know we can make it to $1,000 tonight, so go ahead, put in your resources, get out your debit card or credit card and punch in those digits and make that contribution tonight so we can start announcing it because the minute you go on there and make your contribution, we will get a little text message from uh, comrade Amanda Carlozzi who's going to be tracking this and we will announce it to our audience tonight. So let's go ahead and do that. And now before we get into our uh, main presentation from Chairwoman Penny Hess, tonight comrades we're talking about this issue of sexual violence and I'm very much looking forward to hearing what Chairwoman Penny uh, will be saying on this tonight. And this is a topic that we have dealt with before on our webinars and events, and one that we feel is especially relevant today as the topic of rape culture and sexual violence in white society is being increasingly revealed in the crisis of imperialism. The so-called Me Too movement, the prevalence of sexual abuse in Hollywood, the rape of children by pedophile Catholic priests, 
The Senate hearings around the gang rapist Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh's drunken predation towards teenage girls, and of course the sexual crimes of the president himself, have become the focus of a popular conversation in the white world about sexual violence. However, as per usual, this conversation within white society obscures and even apologizes for the hideous 600-year history of rape and violence against African, indigenous, and colonized women, men, and children by white people and white power, the original gang rape upon which the entire system of white power rests. So what is the way forward? How do we truly oppose the culture of rape and violence? Is the Me Too movement the way forward? And how can white men, women, and all white people truly take a stand to end the culture of sexual violence? That's what Penny Hess is going to be breaking down for us tonight. So before we launch into this extremely important discussion, we have a powerful video of our chairman, Omalia Shatella. Amazing clip from a, uh, of the longer presentation that you should watch from the 7th Congress just a couple weeks ago in St. Louis. This was at the Better Family Life venue where he was reading from his magnificent political report, and he took a pause from his political report to comment on this question of sexual violence today. So here is Chairman Amalia Shatella at the 7th Congress of the African People's Socialist Party. Kyle, let's go to the clip. Fewer and fewer people uh, in this country and around the world uh, have any uh, assumptions, uh, false assumptions, uh, that this government can solve their problems. And it is an extraordinary moment uh, to be alive and to be able to participate in this great struggle at a time when the crisis of imperialism is exposing itself with such clarity. And the only reason that you can be or should be upset is that if you see the crisis of imperialism as your crisis, if you see the crisis of the slave system as your crisis, and it is not our crisis. We celebrate the crisis of white power. We celebrate the crisis of white power. In the past, uh, people who have been called communists in this country have talked about the hidden dictatorship of the ruling class. For colonial and subject people, the dictatorship has never been hidden. We've always had to deal with it, a naked, brutal uh, dictatorship. But increasingly, uh, white people are having to take some kind of look, peek in some ways, even though every, much of what they see is, is participating in an element of disinformation. There are many people who are crying today about how you know, poor Professor Dr. Ford um, was mistreated by Mr. Kavanaugh. I shall be frank. I don't like uh, the mistreatment of women, but I have no tears. I have no tears left for people, white women, who have just discovered that your husbands, brothers, sons, uncles, uh, etc. Rape women. I have no, no idea just to when, 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 when for such a long time you have covered for the rape of African, Mexican, and other oppressed women. <laughs> I have, I have no tears for. Uh, white women who are concerned that there is some kind of assault on reproductive rights when Puerto Rican and African women have been used uh, as subjects and test tools to with for everything that was provide some kind of reproductive rights and capacity for white women were tested on Puerto Rican, on African women, etc. I have none of that. I know the history of gynecology, for example, in this country and what they've done to African women. And I don't, I'm not sympathetic even to white people or white women who want to say that I didn't know. 
and nor all white people generally sympathetic to that line either because people have been able to condemn Germans who killed other white people, other Germans who became Jews, right? Uh, who were Jews, uh, uh, who claim I just didn't know uh, as, as people were murdered, being murdered all around them. I knew about it. And I'm not as smart as white people. White people are the smartest people on the world. Got the best education, got everything. And damn it, if I knew it as, as, as dumb and backwards and, and uh, suffering from this great distance uh, from uh, civilization as I do as an African, then damn it, you should have known about it as well. So uh, it's no longer, it's no longer exclusive. You can't excuse that anymore. You can't do that anymore. Mm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow. Very powerful. Powerful. That powerful. was such a powerful presentation. And, you know, as we were saying earlier uh, off camera, the reality of what white people did to African people and indigenous people is always worse than anything you could mm -hmm. imagine. <laughs> yep. And the chairman just touched the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to thank everyone who has contributed so far to the Black Power Blueprint. And again, if you want to forward this work that we've been talking about, building dual power for the African working class, we want to, first of all, thank Rose uh, Latoul. If yes. I'm Uhuru Uhuru Rose. Uhuru Rose. Uhuru Rose. Out in Oakland, Uhuru Rose. Excellent. $10 donation. $10. Uhuru. Thank you, Rose. So that leaves us with $990 to go. And we are going right. to get there. So um, don't forget to do like Rose did and go to blackpowerblueprint.org and donate generously towards the goal of raising $1,000 tonight. This goes directly to the Black Power Blueprint, building dual power in the hands of the African working class in St. Louis, Missouri. And now it is my privilege to turn it over to Chairwoman Penny Hess. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jesse. And welcome to everybody here tonight. I just really want to again salute that powerful statement by Chairman yeah. O'Malley Shatella which I think was three weeks ago at mm -hmm. the opening or the second day of the 7th Congress of the African People's Socialist Party held in St. Louis, Missouri. That was just part of, you, know, you can watch it, by the way, mm -hmm. on Facebook or, and YouTube, and, uh, YouTube mm -hmm. of the Burning Spear. Mm -hmm. And um, the chairman was reading from his historic political report that sums up this crisis of imperialism. So. It was, it was very, very powerful. I also want to salute uh, Deputy Chair Ona Zenea Chatella, who leads the work of the Black Power Blueprint in St. Louis, and to salute this project or this series of projects in the heart of the African community of the north side, of the south side, no, the north side of, of St. Louis, Missouri which is uh, a colony, clear and simple, mm -hmm. and it's a project that represents the struggle of African people led by that despised sector of the African working class for the total liberation of Africa and African people and all oppressed peoples on this planet for the a system that ends all oppression. And we have to realize what the chairman was saying tonight, that we are witnessing the crisis of imperialism. And to the extent that we see that crisis as our crisis, then we are in real trouble. And this is partly why um, acts of sexual violence are being exposed. And as the chairman said, you know, that without acknowledging the complicity of white women, in the sexual violence that our husbands, our fathers, our grandfathers, um, that white men have carried out and perpetrated against African and indigenous people um, inside this country and around the world because sexual violence is a weapon of war. Mm -hmm. It's a weapon of colonial occupation. It's a weapon of genocide. And the U.S has always used it, and white people sitting on the pedestal of the oppression, mm -hmm. of the colonization of the majority of the population has always used this. I just want to, I want to start by saying something about something that's in the news of violence that happened in uh, Pittsburgh the other day at a Jewish synagogue, the Tree of Life synagogue, 
And, you know, I want to recognize that, you know, I hear people talking about hate. Mm -hmm. Hate did not cause that. Right. What caused that is a system built on unspeakable violence. Yes. On <laughs> genocide that wiped out hundreds of millions of human beings and civilizations on, in this hemisphere, on this land. A violence that invaded Africa, assaulted Africa, kidnapped African human beings, and began the first human trafficking that has ever been known on this planet that created the wealth of this system, that it was such um, an unprecedented and huge um, theft of human labor and productivity that it created the greatest wealth that has ever been known on this planet, which is in the hands of capitalism, US imperialism, and Europe today. So this entire country is built and soaked in the blood of the indigenous people and African people. So we have to look at all, at all violence that takes place in that light. We have to look at the fact, as the chairman said, that this is the crisis of imperialism. Imperialism is unraveling. Hardly a day or a week goes by that we don't see um, some kind of mass shooting. Just a couple of days before that was a white man went into a grocery store in Louisville, Kentucky and opened fire against African people. And that's what this is about. This is about, that's what Trump is about. It's not about hate, it's about a state that is built at the expense of everybody else, at the expense of the enslavement of African people and the genocide of the indigenous people and about the fact that all white people sit on this pedestal of this oppression. And, you know, we, we're talking about a worldwide system. We're talking about 5,000 or more, seven or 8,000 indigenous people are, are going to be amassing at this border. And Trump and this government has 5,000 armed soldiers to, to shoot them down and kill them as they would be coming across the stolen border mm -hmm. to come to basically their own land and mm -hmm. to get their stolen resources. You know, we're talking about the fact that, um, that, that the U.S. is backing uh, a, a system that is invading and murdering the people of Yemen to the extent that at least half of that population is going to die of starvation, mm -hmm. if not from bombs and, and, and the acts of war that is being, and nobody is talking about this. This is not something, we don't talk about that and we don't talk about it as hate. Right. The US government yeah. is carrying this out as part of its colonial policies in the mid Midwest, in the Middle East, and the fact that, you know, what the US just backed in Syria and we see inside the borders of, of this country, indigenous people living in concentration camps called reservations with the highest poverty and the highest death rate in the entire, of all populations inside the US. We see this country that has lynched and burned African people, that white people have done this, and we see an African person gunned down by the police every 18 hours. Um, inside the borders, the stolen borders of the United States. So this is violence. Yeah. This is the soaked, blood-soaked violence that we see, um, you know, going on day by day. This is colonial violence. This is imperialist violence, whether it takes place in occupied Palestine, whether it takes place against the people of Vietnam, or the people of, of Venezuela, or Cuba, or any place else, or Afghanistan, or Iraq, or inside the borders of the United States where there is colonialism here. And colonial violence is something of which, you know, it's outside the law. It's war without terms. It has no um, Geneva Convention mm -hmm. to soften it. Mm -hmm. It is without historical precedent. It is without words to describe, and most indigenous and colonized peoples never had words to describe what white people, what we did to them. Um, there's no price to pay for colonial violence. It is always no guilty parties. It's always carried out by persons unknown. That of all of the up to 10,000 
lynchings, the terror and torture against African people inside this country, no white person ever went to jail for that. Right. So this is, you know, sanctioned. It was sanctioned by the U.S. government. And as long as it is white people slaughtering, torturing, mutilating African, indigenous, and colonized peoples, Filipinos, um, Indian from India, Vietnamese, Arab people, oppressed people around the world, there is nothing on our minds about that. There's nothing on our minds about that. It's part of what the U.S. does to bring about the resources and lifestyle that we take for granted. And sexual violence is part and parcel of this violence. It's part, a key part of colonial violence. So it always has been. We can't say we didn't know, like right, the chairman right. just said, yeah. that you know, the U.S. condemned that um, for uh, very hypocritically you know, against Germany right. and um, the Nazi, Nazi regime and the assault by white people against other white people, the, the fratricide, as the chairman calls it, after hundreds of years of wiping out Africans on the continent of Africa, indigenous people throughout this entire hemisphere, Arab people, just oppressed peoples everywhere. Um, we, didn't, we, we can't say we didn't know mm -hmm. because we do know. We do know this, but we are the subjects of history. We have been the subjects of history, and we tell the narrative. We tell the story of ourselves as the good white people, the, um, the you know, the religion, the moral, the moral white people, the, you know, all of, all of these things that we supposedly are, and this is the American way, this is what made America great. All of these lies that we know are lies. Mm -hmm. We look in the mirror every day, as the chairman said, we know these are lies. And so, you know, white women know and knew about the sexual violence that white men perpetrate against African and, and indigenous um, people and have since day one since the first white person stepped foot on this land or stepped foot into Africa and began raping an entire continent and entire land. Yeah, we know about it. Read, yep. read about Emmett Till. Yep. Read about, um, look at the pictures of him. If you have never, the open casket yes. that his mother fought for in 1955 when he was killed by the words of a white woman. Yep. The words yep. of a white woman who later said, that he, he didn't do anything. Right. Who later said that, but never paid a price. Yeah. Never paid a price for that. Um, look at what white people, you know, what the violence that that instigated. Look at the pictures of him. It, it's, you know, his mother fought for that. And that is sexual violence because I, it was a white woman yeah. who charged him um, saying that he did something to her, which, which he did not. He was walking down the street and he was murdered in the, in, in the most hideous way. Or read about, you know, it's talked about in, in the book, 12 Years a Slave, the double threat that African women faced in, as enslaved on the plantation where white men, the slave masters, would rape them on a regular basis and use them in so many ways as sexual toys and whatever they, they wanted to do, have them dance. Um, for parties or you know anything anything that they did, but at the same time, the white woman, the wife of the slave master, the slave mistress, I guess, um, would set up these African women that their husbands were raping for beatings. Rather than confront their husbands what they were doing, they would torture and participate in the torture of African women. So, if an African woman was being raped. She knew, you know, by the slave master, she knew that the slave master's wife was going to be attacking her in a very real way. And, you know, this is, this is what happened. Read about the white woman who instigated the Tulsa, Oklahoma burning, bombing, and murder of an entire prosperous African community there in 1920. Um, a white woman who instigated the burning of Rosewood in Florida. That you know, wherever African people had some measure of prosperity, a white woman could just say a word, mm -hmm. and white men would you know destroy it. And you know, we were 
we were at the, Jesse and I were at the Lynching Museum, the first museum that exists inside the borders of the United States in uh, Montgomery, Alabama, uh, to the question, you know, opening up the question of lynchings. And it has shortcomings, but it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful to see it. And it shows, among other things, it does raise that white women helped to instigate yep. this. And it also says how many African women were, were lynched, something that, a story that's not told. Mm -hmm. So there's the story, um, the true case of an African woman in Lowndes County, Georgia, named Mary Turner, who protested the white mob murder of her husband, who was Hayes Turner, in um, 1918. And she, uh, Mary was eight months pregnant, and she was furious and took a really powerful and courageous stand. And so a white mob, white men, you know, raped her, turned her upside down and hung, hanged her from a tree, um, doused her with gasoline, and then split open with a knife her, her um, belly and removed the eight-month-old baby that cried. It, it was, you know, the child was alive and uh, stomped that baby to death and burned the mother. I mean, this is sexual violence, you know. I, I mean, it, there's so many examples of this. This is in the news. This was in the newspaper. White people knew about it. White women knew about it. They yeah. knew White women have always known that we would have the power of life and death over African people, equal with white men, even if we were so-called oppressed on the pedestal by the same white power system. Read about the Sand Creek Massacre in, in Colorado in 1867 when 105 mostly Indigenous women and children were slaughtered by um, the U.S. government forces. That they took the babies. They were in, they were camping near Sand Creek in Co eastern Colorado. Um, the white cavalry forces under Colonel Shivington was his name um, took the babies and bounced them around from the tips of their bayonets, which are are rifles with knives on them and you know threw them back and forth and caught them with the knife of the bayonet and um, and then they they took the women and they held the women down the mothers down as they were doing this and then they raped the women they cut out their vaginas and uteruses and used them as trophies and spoils of war um, for saddle horn covers and even hat bands in, you know, in just the most sadistic and hideous way and defended that. The, you know, this, was, this was what it meant to be a U.S. pioneer in Colorado and really what it still means. And I've seen pictures on the internet of white men in front of indigenous homes wearing white, uh, wearing indigenous women's dresses. So I'm sure that they raped and killed the women and put on the dress. And I've also seen pictures of indigenous babies in the hands of US uh, government colonels and generals and leaders of war and holding the baby as a spoil of war, something that they were going to take home. I know that you know in my hometown, New Albany, Indiana, right across the, the river from Louisville, there is a, um, un a underground railroad museum there. And it, New Albany was so-called a free state. It was part of the Union, and Louisville was an enslaved state. But you know, if Africans could get across the Ohio River, then supposedly they were free. But in reality, the, um, the Ku Klux Klan and just plain white people terrorized Africans so much that they had to go further north. They couldn't really live there. But this woman wrote a book about the Underground Railroad and the condition of African people 
um, during this period, and she found in the courthouse of this town, of my town that I grew up in, the manumission papers of many Africans. The manumission papers were the papers in which um, somebody would buy an African, and she found all of this di different documentation, and she lists it in the book. And there's case after case of rich white men or middle class white men purchasing a 15 year old African girl, case after case. You know, I just read, by the way, did you see the basement that they just unearthed in um, Thomas Jefferson's home? Is that Monticello mm -hmm. or one of yeah. those? Um, the basement where he kept Sally Hemings in the wine cellar? They're unearthing it now. They're, they're doing archaeological digs there. Wow. So, you know, the, 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 he started raping her when she was 13 years old. Um, so we're talking about you know sexual violence, and this is endemic. This is the DNA of the U.S. of imperialism, and that all white people, including white women, sit on this pedestal of the oppression, violence, rape, and murder of African and indigenous people and colonized peoples around the world. Um, and we get our rights as white women on this pedestal, that when we fight for our rights, when we fight for Me Too, um, we're talking about, you know, the ability to, to become an actress, mm, you know, to yeah. be part of Hollywood, to make the bargain that, yeah, okay, well, I guess that's part of the price that we have to pay to get to mm. be a starlet, mm. you know, because uh, everybody knew that. Right. I mean, Shirley Temple wrote about it. Yep. She was raped or attempted rape, and apparently she fought it off pretty well. I don't know, but, you know, this, is, this was always known. It was always known that that's part of, you know, the, they call it the casting couch. The yep. joke of the casting couch. That's part of what you have to do to, to make it in Hollywood. That's mm -hmm. just known. And, <laughs> no, and white mm -hmm. women didn't fight that before, almost like the chairman are saying. You know, they, they made the bargain to, okay, well, I'll go with it. But there was no public movement about it. Um, and, you know, I mean, this has to be said because yeah. it, it was about getting more resources, more of the stolen resources um, on the planet Earth and to share it with white men on a higher high, and higher levels of this pedestal um, as white women. And that's just entirely what this has been about. So, um, you know, our movement for liberation, for white women's liberation came off of the African liberation struggle of the 1960s where this is where the consciousness of that this consciousness of liberation they wiped out those terms today but this is where that movement was generated from and originally you know parts of that movement in any case were very much in solidarity with the right of african people to liberation so we fought we fought to have equal share with white men on this pedestal of power and prosperity of colonialism. I also wanted to say that sexual violence against children, which is coming out yeah. more and more, mm -hmm. especially about the Catholic Church, um, is completely endemic in the institutions of imperialism, of which the Catholic Church is a main one, as well as the US government, the British government, Hollywood, all these other places where you hear and it's coming out about what happens to children who get caught up in that web of, of um, imperialist morality. You mm -hmm. know, that's imperialist morality. That's what it's about. That's fun for them. And, you know, to, to say that, of course, the Catholic Church played a key role in the establishment of capitalism, mm -hmm. in the ability of Europe to assault and invade and colonize and even commit genocide against um, the, the entire planet. The Catholic Church divided up the planet and gave some to Portugal, some to France. So that's why we see, you know, in the middle of Spanish-speaking um, South America, where Spain h held most of it, we have Portuguese-speaking Brazil, mm -hmm. you know, which has a, a colonial dictator right. going on right now. Yeah. Um, and this is why, because the Catholic Church gave Portugal that land that is now called Brazil. And, you know, handed it out, handed out Africa, handed out, 
Philippi the Philippines and you know, all of these different places so to appease what were the wars of Europeans fighting each other over who is going to control the resources and the population of the planet Earth. So the, the Catholic Church itself is built deeply on slavery and genocide. The Jesuits, you know, we just saw something that came out recently about the um, Je Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., which is a Jesuit institution, had sold something like 37 enslaved Africans from its plantation in something like 1837 to raise money for that institution, for that university, that college then and now a university to raise money as a fundraiser because the Jesuits were slave masters. We know that, that, that the Jesuits and the Catholic priests were responsible for the mass graves, the genocide of the indigenous people around the, um, all of the missions that are tourist spots and all throughout, all down the coast of California, um, that was part of you know, seizing the indigenous people, putting them into concentration camps, and working them to death, basically. And, you know, and also what was called the indigenous boarding schools, which stole indigenous children and put them into these schools, which there are many lawsuits in Canada and throughout the US by indigenous people against the Catholic Church for what it did to, um, to indigenous children, which included sexual violence, which included murdering them and torturing them in every possible way, these little children. This is what the system is. Yep. You know, and we know that um, the US government and the British government are totally tied with sexual child abuse. That's come out many times. Mm -hmm. The guy, Jimmy Savile, who was in Britain and, and died, unfortunately, before anything could happen to him, but probably nothing would happen to him. <laughs> he was um, the prince, what's his name, Charles, yeah. best friend. He was um, a massive pedophile. He had yeah. all of these different um, charities and nonprofits for the sh sheer purpose of amassing children so that he could rape them at will. Um, often, and a lot of them were disabled and they were mm. in these hospitals, you know, and he would just go into the hospitals, into a room, and, and just, you know, just sexually attack and assault children. We know that um, Andrew, another one of the British princes that, you know, we're just supposed to love is um, a pedophile and was accused by a woman who, when she was 13, was part of the um, sexual orgy island of Jeffrey Epstein, mm. um, who you know, had these amazing orgies there that Clint, Bill Clinton, yep. William Jefferson Clinton attended, and Trump, and yep. many others of yep. the ruling class. Everybody did, it was yeah. a scene. And the guy Epstein was put under some kind of house arrest for like two weeks or something. Right. And, um, you know, it still continues to do this to, to this day because this is what this system is. And there's so much more that we could say. But, you know, we have to understand that this is the system that we live on and that we are not going to find something that ends sexual violence just for us. And if we do, we got it at the expense of the continuation of sexual violence and all colonial violence against the majority of the planet Earth. And we don't represent that. You know, and that this is a period for us as white people to, to recognize that this crisis of imperialism is not our crisis. Yes. That we have the ability to join the culture of reparations. Mm -hmm. yes. The culture of reparations is a culture that stands in solidarity with the struggle of the African working class to have power over their lives and end to colonialism. The ability of, of African and oppressed people to have their resources returned, to have um, their lands, to have their culture, to have self-determination and their own economy that has been stolen from them while we live off the stolen resources of African people. And when we do this, we 
you know, we join something that is about the end of oppression, all forms of oppression, where not only the end of oppression, but this is a movement where African women lead, African same gender loving people are in leadership. This is where African workers are in leadership and that we can find a solution on that, the forward side of history. It's the only thing. The system, as the chairman said, this government is not going to ever solve our problems. Yep. It is not going to end this violence. We have to end the system that's built on this violence. It has to go. It can't be reformed. It can't be reformed. And if we yes. are concerned about sexual violence, about all violence, about violence against Jewish people, violence that is being perpetrated every day in the system. We have to end the colonial system. We have to stand with African and oppressed peoples for freedom and liberation and white power. U.S. imperialism, parasitic capitalism must go. Uh -huh. Unity through? Reparations! Reparations. Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uhuru, Chairwoman Penny, thank you for that incredibly powerful statement. Yes, Uhuru. And Very uh, it, I think it just, wow, um, it's still sinking in uh, to my mind as it does every time I hear uh, you speak to this question that it's in the DNA of colonialism itself, that it's uh, an act of war, rape, uh, sexual assault, violence. And if, if you're sick of it too, if you want to see a culture of reparations, You'll join the people who have already stepped up and donated at uh, blackpowerblueprint.org. And to we have some people. Fantastic. Besides Rose Latoul in Oakland, which you, you already announced, but I want to salute Rose again. Alexander mm -hmm. Enriquez, $25 from Portland. Oh, for real. Ooh, wow. And raised $35. So I don't, I'm not clear on that, but. We've raised 35 total. And we have oh, 965, we total. Okay, 965 left to go. So go to blackpowerblueprint.org. Blueprint and, and, you know, and, and give to this project that is about the end of all oppression. Yes. And the leadership of the African working class, the only thing that's going to save this planet. This yeah. is the place to go, blackpowerblueprint.org. Go ahead. Let's, we're going to raise $1,000 tonight. Yes. I want to put in $20 tonight. Uhuru. 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 I'd like to match you, Chairman Penny. All right. I'd like to do match 20. both of you as well and do 20. All right. All right. Well, that's, uh, $60 right there. So that brings us to 95, mm -hmm. which means we need to raise another $905. Is that correct, math? Yes. yes. $905 to yes. go to blackpowerblueprint.org. Make your contribution so that we can announce it on the air. And you know, this, this is a, a financial contribution that you're making to very concrete programs projects of the African People's Education and Defense Fund and Black Power Blueprint, but it's also part of creating the culture of reparations that Chairwoman Penny spoke of, that act of going to blackpowerblueprint.org and making your donation, mm -hmm. telling other people about it, making it something that's part of your daily activities. You know, it's, it's something that is as much a part of your life as maintaining where you live. We live on stolen land. We live with stolen resources. All the horrific things that we just heard Chairwoman Penny has lay out, uh, that is our legacy. And it's up to us whether we want to leave it as, as it stands and identify with imperialism or side with the future, side with the, the right side of history, mm -hmm. a world without oppression, a world without rape and exploitation. That's the kind of world that I want to see. Absolutely. And there's, there's only one organization that is leading this worldwide revolutionary process that has announced itself as the vanguard of the African working class, the African revolution, and that's the African People's Socialist Party. And this is exactly how you can help bring this into existence, make this the reality that it is. You know, when, um, I, I, well, during the time that the U.S. was assaulting and waging colonial war against the people of Vietnam, they trained U.S. soldiers with a cadence. The cadence is that thing that they use when they march. The that, yeah, yeah, that mm -hmm. kind of beat. And <clears throat> they would, it, and I couldn't find some immediately, but they were famously about raping mm. the women of Vietnam. 
Yeah. And, you know, this is what war is. Yeah. War yeah. and sexual violence, colonial war and yeah. sexual violence go hand in hand. For when, Europe, when Europeans fight other Europeans, generally speaking, they do not do that. Right. That is considered uh, a war crime. Right. But not when they assault and wage war of wars of occupation against colonized peoples, either inside the borders of the United States, where we do have colonialism, mm -hmm. where we have colonial um, violence and a situation of political and economic oppression and exploitation of African and Mexican indigenous people inside this this United States, whose borders itself are stolen. Yeah, and th this uh, this is a movement that gained a notoriety and visibility in large part from the campaign to free Desi Woods. Yes. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, the slogan for that was free Desi Woods, smash, smash colonial, colonial violence. violence. And I think that's very on point for mm -hmm. what we're talking about tonight. Do, do, do you want to uh, remind our what uh, Absolutely. Desi Absolutely. That was, was about? an incredible campaign of the African People's Socialist Party in the 1970s, Desi Woods was an African woman who was hitchhiking with her friend to go visit her friend's brother in prison. And she was picked up by this, I think it was a real estate agent or something. Um, <laughs> Ronnie Horn was his name. And, you know, I recently looked up in that part of Georgia, still a lot of horns. Mm. And there's still a lot of... Um, I think they still own real estate offices yeah. or whatever. They're still there. Wow. But um, she, Ronnie Horn took them out into, you know, in the car out to the woods and was trying to rape them. And Desi Woods very courageously got his gun, snatched and grabbed and fought for his gun and killed him, wow. and shot, him yeah. shot him twice. Yeah. And then, um, you know, ran away and got back to where they needed to be, but they, but Desi Woods was accused of murder hmm. and um, faced 22 years in prison on that. And during that time, the white women's movement and the white left attempted to say that it was a case of a women's, woman's right to fight against sexual violence. And, you know, the African People's Socialist Party said no, it is free Desi Wood smash colonial violence because this is what happens to African women. Yes. And that was a really serious struggle that was taken on. And that was that when I came into APSC, that was the main campaign. And, you know, the party won that among many different, um, even, you know, women's, some women's organizations and women's, white women's, uh, lesbian collectives and other kinds of things supported that. It was a very important dividing line in, in understanding the anti-colonial struggle and very brilliant of the party to be able to struggle and wage that. And yeah. you know, that campaign was known and even traveled to um, Scandinavia, Holland, um, different countries, I think Germany, in, in Europe, and there was, we used to have a um, place, you know, a file of all of the articles from all over the world mm -hmm. where, you know, different magazines and newspapers that articles appeared in and, and they were from, you know, Tokyo and China and, you know, just all over the world. People knew about that case of Desi Woods. It was a very, very powerful case that, that the party fought and won. And, and Desi Woods was a Muslim and when she got out of prison she did come to Oakland and her name was Rashida mm -hmm. Mohammed and she spoke at, at many events mm -hmm. and was well known, very well known and loved in Oakland. In fact there's a street named after her. Yeah. Uhuru. 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 So um, just wanted to announce and thank Ali Ayello, amazing comrade who coordinates the birthday fundraiser campaign Uhuru, and, and, is, and is the national secretary of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. So Uhuru to comrade Ali. Uhuru. 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 Uh, put in $15 tonight. Uhuru Ali and to comrade Jackson Hollingsworth who is here with us in our live studio audience. Comrade Jackson who put in Five dollars, bringing us to one hundred and fifteen dollars. One hundred and fifteen. So Meaning eight eighty-five to go. Yeah. Eight eighty-five to go. And uh, we also received a question, which I'm wondering if we could address 
for okay. a moment, um, okay. which was from a person in, actually, I'm not sure. I think in in Seattle. I'm not sure exactly where, but uh, who asked? Um, oh no, in Portland. Why are white men leading this? White I mean, men leading this. I think meaning this webinar. Okay. Well, which I'm, white I'd be men happy to answer. Because these are white men in solidarity with African liberation, and we have to win all white people. White men are part. Of, you know, white. This is what we're trying to say here. Mm -hmm. White women are guilty. White right. women owe reparations. White women have united with white men to yeah. be to be greater to have greater power in this system. This is not about patriarchy. Mm -hmm. This is about colonialism. This is where an entire nation of people, the white nation, the American nation is white men, women, and children. Look at those lynchings. Look at those pictures. Yeah. What do yeah. you see there? Little white girls yep. standing in front of the body. Yep. The white women are guilty. White women are guilty. We are responsible also. And that's what we're saying in this, mm -hmm. that we have been complicit, not just now we discover it, but also we participated in right, the yeah. sexual and colonial violence, the torture and the terror yeah. against Africans, against indigenous people. We fought for it. We egged on the men. Yep. This is recorded history. I'm not making up anything. We dressed up our children in pinafores and placed them in front of the bodies, the hanging bodies, the lifeless bodies of African men and women. Mm -hmm. So I welcome white men. White men need to take a stand. Yeah, exactly. White men need to take a stand <clears throat> in solidarity with African liberation. I welcome them. I appreciate them. I feel that they are leaders. They are the models of what we all have to be. I aspire. I aspire to be you know, as dedicated and as leading and, and bold and fearless as these comrades right here. So I just really want to salute them. Thank you, Thank you Chairwoman Penny. That's Needless to say, we, we obviously aspire to be like Chairwoman Penny. Yeah, so. and, and, and just, yeah, I, I want to really put forward Chairwoman Penny uh, Absolutely. Hess for having made that statement and yeah. for your stance. Uh, if it wasn't made clear, this is our leadership in the African People's Solidarity Committee and its mass front, the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, of which I am a member and of which uh, yeah. Jesse is a chair. But uh, Chairman Penny Hess was the first white person who said yes to the question of reparations as a revolutionary strategy and to work under the leadership of the African Liberation Movement. That is what is key. Our leadership is in Chairman Omali Yeshatela of the African People's yes. Socialist Party, of Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yeshatela, and the Central Committee of the African People's Socialist Party. We are under African working class leadership. Yes. And we do that because we're in a process of overturning this entire relationship that we have with the whole planet as white people, whether we're white men, whether we're white wealthy people, white workers, uh, white uh, same gender loving uh, people, what, whatever problems we experience, we experience it on a pedestal of yep. the oppression of the rest of the planet. Exactly. And that, we carry that out as, as white people, whatever our gender is, whatever exactly. situation. So I, I want to rid myself of that. I, wanna, I don't want to see a planet with colonialism because it's no. not a planet that is uh, hospitable to life. No. Colonialism is anti-woman. It's uh, anti-LGBT, uh, same gender loving community. It's anti-life. Yes, it is. So. Right, and you know, in this movement, under the leadership of, of the African Revolution, the African People's Socialist Party, whoever you are, you can be a leader. Yes. You can mm -hmm. be a leader. Disabled, uh, that they call, which right. is a horrible term. Yes. Or, <laughs> or you know, woman, man, um, LGBTQIA, any any designation, old, young, yes. you yeah. know, child. We had an 11-year-old boy, you know, mm -hmm. white boy, giving an amazing statement of why he supports reparations to African people when we were in the day of reparations to African people in St. Louis just the other week. Yeah. And, you know, children, older people, families, 
whatever. Be, yeah. You can be here. You can be a leader in this. Yes. My there nine, is no yeah. stipulation. My nine-year-old daughter is selling there her you go. pies there you go. As, as of this past weekend. Didn't she have her beret on? Yes, yes she, she was, did. She was she really looking good. revolutionary. I, yeah. I'm so proud. <laughs> and, you know, if it, if it weren't for this movement, I, I don't know what I would be pushing her into and, and feel comfortable with. Yeah. Feel that she's safe. There's no place I can think of Never that is safer for a young woman than at an Uhuru Foods booth or an Uhuru Solidarity Movement table. This is the place to be, and, and Absolutely. this is the way to get to the root of the problem. So I, I just wanted to give a shout. I, I wanted to say something about the white man thing, too. In just a moment, before I do, uh, I wanted to thank Janice Kant, who put in $100 tonight. Yeah. 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 Woo. Woo. Janice Kant. And comrade Sam Day, who put in $5 for $220 tonight. 220, so 780 left oh, to raise. Oh, near 780. Yes, yeah, so we go to blackpowerblueprint.org. Put those resources in. Reparations tonight. Blackpowerblueprint.org. And if I may uh, say something on this question of, oh, Lisa Watson. $25. Lisa. <laughs> Just speaking to, I fully unite with what Chairwoman Penny has said. And you know, it is true that we are under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. And in the Solidarity Movement, our direct leadership is Chairwoman Penny Hess. And Chairwoman Penny Hess is not the leader because of being a woman, but because of having taken a, an, an uncompromising stand of solidarity with African liberation proven in practice. That's why Penny Hess is the chairwoman of the African People's Solidarity Committee. Mm -hmm. And I think this question is, you know, it relates to the kind of like leftist politic that's out there of, you know, um, you know, the kind of feminist politic that's out there that makes certain assumptions about uh, you know, which issues should be spoken of, of by which sectors of the, of the white population and things like that. And, you know, mo the way most of these, these organizations or movements function is very deceptive. They'll be like, okay, we're going to have something on sexual violence. Let's just drag a woman out, you know, and throw her out there so she can speak on it or something like that. And it's just like very uh, false representational type of politics. And that's not what this is about. This is a movement of white people who owe reparations to African people. Newsflash, white men owe reparations to African people. So yeah, a, yeah. a movement of white people who owe reparations to African people should be flooded with white men. There should be white yes. men all over the US and Europe running around saying Uhuru. Yes. There should be millions of them. Mm -hmm. exactly. you sh people should be like, wow, USM's a lot of white men. It's not. It's not. It's be more white men are joining, but it's not, that wouldn't be a contradiction if there were tons of white men saying, we owe reparations to African people. As a white man, my legacy is one of rape and violence against African women, against African people, against indigenous people, and I owe reparations as a white man. And the white man, like that's the personification of imperialism that is hated by the oppressed peoples of peoples of the world, yeah. the white man, like that's the ultimate representation. And as has been exposed on this program tonight, the white man includes white women. Mm -hmm. The white man as a, a stand-in for, for white power imperialism has included white women. Because sure, white men have done horrible things to white women on the pedestal of the enslavement of African people, but there was damn near gender equality at the lynch mob. That's right. We were equal partners in the oppression of African people at the lynch mob. Yeah. So this is not a feminist thing of like, you know, certain issues should only be talked about or, or by certain people or anything like that. Like we're, the issue we're talking about tonight is reparations to African people and being under the leadership of the African revolution and white men should be talking about that all over the world and doing it and making it real. So mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to say. And I want to call on every, any white yeah. man who's watching, mm -hmm. go to blackpowerblueprint.org mm -hmm. and pay reparations because you owe reparations just like I owe reparations. All white men and all white people owe reparations to African people. So, so let's do it. Let's go to blackpowerblueprint.org and take that stand tonight. Th right. That's the way forward. Not wearing a, you know, becoming a male feminist or trying to become a good ally and wearing this is what a feminist looks like t-shirt or whatever you know that's not what this is about mm -hmm. that this is about changing the world and reparations to african people is the stand that we have to take as white men uh -huh. thank you so much jesse that was really powerful uh -huh. yes i really really salute that and you know just also that the african people solidarity committee was 
was formed by the African People's Socialist Party to, as a strategic move to be able to bring the voice of black power into the white community being spoken by white people. And mm -hmm. we all have to do this. So it's a brilliant strategy that we, this is our responsibility to talk about this, all of us. And so, you know, this is a strategy that you can be part of that is really significant. It's really, really significant because, you know, we're, we're the ones that have the responsibility to just win all these other white people to come jump off this pedestal and join what is going to be the future of this planet. What is the future of this planet? Mm -hmm. And we have the ability to be part of something so much bigger than ourselves, so much bigger than our stomachs and pocketbooks and subjective little <laughs> things and rantings and you know spats and all the things that we're always involved in, either on Facebook or maybe even in real life. And, yep. You know, this is, is that what to live for? A lot of white people are facing what they, what the media calls the death of despair. And, you know, that's really pathetic. <laughs> I mean, you know, of course, African people and indigenous people have faced genocide right. through colonialism. Yeah. And we suddenly, you know, to the extent to which we see the resistance of, of African people and oppressed people, that's what's creating, as the chairman tells us, this crisis of imperialism. Mm -hmm. So if we see that as, if we take that personally as we are America, mm -hmm. we are this country, we, you know, we, it doesn't have to be Trump, you know, whether you're a Democrat or whatever, right. you know, that we're just not good enough or whatever, we're committing suicide, we're becoming opioid addicts or methamphetamine or alcoholism. Mm -hmm which kills about 88,000 people <laughs> a year. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, how many, how many white people have family members yeah. who have died of alcohol-related? Yep. I can think of five in my direct family. Yeah. And, you know, this is, well, of course, if, we, if this is how we are seeing ourselves, that this system is under assault, so that means we're under assault, mm -hmm then we are in despair. But this movement is a movement of hope. This movement is a movement not just of hope, but actually being part of changing the world, of seeing a future, seeing a world in which we all can live. White power will never do it. It can't heal itself because it is made that way. It yeah. was born that way. It was born that way. But the African Revolution represents what the chairman calls revolutionary morality. Yes. where there will be the end of all oppression and all of the ideas that are uphold this white power system. So, you know, we have the ability to be part of that. It's a beautiful thing. And everything can flower under yes. that leadership. And that's, that's the world that we have to create because there's not going to be a world, you know, in the next 30 years, according to the United Nations. If, uh, you know, if we don't do something about what imperialism has even raped this planet, yep. you know, it, it has. And that problem has to be solved, but white people aren't going to figure that out. Hell yeah. no. You know, Hell it's no. going to be, there was no problem with the environment when indigenous and when African people had power mm -hmm. over their own continent, their own system, their own livelihood and self-determination. There was no problem then. So, right. yeah. you know, we have to return, be part of returning the world and paying the reparations to return the stolen resources mm -hmm. back to African people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's such a gift. It, that was stated at one of the recent days of reparations to African people by uh, a, a member of, a new member of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement who had lived through the 60s. And on hearing a member of the African People's Socialist Party uh, present about reparations said thank you thank you so much for giving us this structure that we would know how to mm -hmm. respond to this yeah. legacy of colonialism and slavery you know and that, that we as white people inherited the legacy of the slave master like jesse said the white man has become the image of imperialism of rape of colonialism of plunder pessimism of creating a hell on earth that's what we've done as white men mm -hmm. as white people yep uh, but there is a way out 
And these conclusions, as I've heard Chairwoman, you've said this many times, no, none of us could have come to these conclusions as white people. Mm -hmm. It was the African People's Socialist Party that had enough faith in humanity to recognize that white people too, despite the horrific past that we have to be held accountable for, we are human beings and we can decide to unite with the future. We can decide to unite with a world uh, based on self-determination, based on freedom, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And we have some more um, reparations tonight. We have Fantastic. Kitty Riley, $20. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Kitty. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Comrade Johan, ten dollars. Ruby Gilson, twenty-five dollars. So we've raised three hundred dollars. All right. A third of our way there. Uh -huh. A third of our way 700 there. Seven hundred to go. So we can do this. We can do this. Uhuru. Thank you to everyone who is donating at BlackPowerBlueprint.org. Uh, we appreciate your donations. We appreciate your your support, your unity, and uh, please spread the word in any way that you know how to do. Uh, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, share, call that wealthy relative, maybe that not so wealthy relative, that person that's been on the fence about this situation. Maybe you know somebody who is identifying with imperialism, who is constantly worried, what are we going to do? What kind of president are we going to get in that's going to fix all of this? We've, we've got to move beyond that. And the first step is supporting the economic basis of a liberated African economy worldwide. That's, that's ground zero for overturning the culture of sex, sexual violence and the culture of colonial violence. Mm -hmm. Blackpowerblueprint.org. Thanks to everyone who has donated so far. And um, you know, this is also about supporting economic development in the black community, economic development for African poor working class people. And it is about fighting against the gentrification that we see in the African uh, community that is uh, you know, part of that uneasy equilibrium between parasitic capitalism and the African revolution. So we, we mm -hmm. support African economic and political independence and a, a renaissance of what we know the African community and working class is capable of. Yes, and, and I think that's something that you know, we have to look at with the Black Power Blueprint, as Chairwoman Penny Hess has pointed out, that this is more than just pushing back the effects of gentrification. Mm -hmm. This is, it's not just about stemming gentrification, it's actually about the reemergence of the rebirth of an African, you know, the African community and African culture and political power and economic power. And it's gonna, it is already changing St. Louis. When we were in St. Louis for the Congress, when the party raised that red, black, and green flag, African people were magnetized to it. A whole bus filled with African school children drove by and African children were screaming with their fists up saying, thank you. You know, this is the, the nation coming together, the African nation, because of the work of the party and the Black Power Blueprint. So that's what white people need to be supporting tonight and going to blackpowerblueprint.org and putting in resources so we can get towards our goal tonight. We're $700 away. Uh -huh. We're up to seven hundred dollars. So, yeah. you know, seven people could put in a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Fourteen there you go. people could put in fifty. Twenty-eight people could put in twenty-five. So let's let's do it. We mm -hmm. can do we this. Can. We, yes, have we have social wealth. We yes. have resources based on um, generation after generation passing down houses and inheritances and all of this based on on the system, of, mm -hmm. based on the enslavement of African people. That's why we have access to that. We have 22 times the wealth of African people in this country right now. And I read that by 2020, which is, what, a year and three months away, yeah. um, that white people will have an average of 86 times the wealth wow. of African people. And that ultimately by, according to this follows the same trajectory, African people in a few years after that will have zero mm. assets, mm. zero overall. So the, it's not, it's not going to happen yeah. because African people are going to be free. Yeah. And this is the struggle that yeah. is going on. This is what the Black Power Blueprint represents. Um, they're going to have the resources back and that's why we're here to win this culture of reparations, which is a culture of the future, a positive culture of freedom and liberation for all oppressed people. That's what this is about. That's what yes. we represent. Mm -hmm. Kristen Fortin, $25. Oh, Kristen. 
Thank you. All right. 325, so 675 to go. 670, let's just whittle away. Whittle, whittle away. away. Mm -hmm. Give your 25, Ship away. 30, give 100. You know, yep. let's, um, let's, let's make this. Let's do this. We can do it. We have another question. So this is from Jackson Hollingsworth, who asks, can you speak on the white woman teacher in Ohio who was arrested in March for taking an African student after uh, gaining partial custody of him and having a child after raping him? Mm. I did hear about that. I mean, it pretty much well, says it all I right mean, there. yeah, that's, what can I say? That, that's imperialist morality. There you and go. What about the, there were two women from the lesbian community, actually, who, um, two white women who adopted, I don't know how many African children, and then they drove off a cliff mm. with those children in there yeah. in Northern California <laughs> a few months ago. Wow. I mean, this is, you know, it's, this is, the re it's a colonial relationship. Yeah. And that this is, it's just sick. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, imperialism does make you sick. Yeah. And it is making people sick. And, and then, yeah. then they have to get to opioids or, you know, alcohol or something to try to dull this pain. But we can't dull it because it, it's going on every day. It's in every news story that, we're, you know, so many people. I mean, I, mean, I see things on, online that say, well, if you want to really relax, just don't watch the news. No, just don't watch the news, you know. Right. And um, yeah, so we just tune out and then we can say, well, I didn't know, I didn't right. know. But mm -hmm. we do know, mm -hmm. we do know. That's why we don't watch the news. Right. You know, because this is what the news is about. I think one point that you made earlier, Chairwoman Penny, that I think is really important is that historically, it's not, it's not only that white women have covered for white men in, and been complicit with the sexual violence against African people, that as you mentioned, sexual violence has actually been used to, or the, uh, um, accusation of sexual violence has been used to criminalize African men. Mm -hmm. And when we went to that lynching museum, it said that 25% of the lynchings were after sexual That's assault right. accusations right. against African men by white women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not, I mean, 25%. or saying, he looked at me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or That's, he whistled. Or, yeah, you he know, whistled. Whatever. That was the accusation he, against we, Emmett Till. That was Emmett Till. Right. Mm -hmm. He whistled. So, I don't know. It just reminds me of, of Chairman Amalia Chatella's profound statement, there's no such thing as women in general. Yeah. Right. And how there's the women of the oppressor nation and the women of the oppressed nation. Because right. mm -hmm. these shirts started to come out after the, the uh, Kavanaugh hearing that said, I believe women. That was the statement that was coming out from like the Me Too movement and stuff like right. that. And well, I don't believe the woman that said Emmett Till did something to her. Exactly. Or any of those women that accused those African men of doing something to justify lynching them. Yeah. So, and if, if you read, like Ida B. Exactly. Wells was a, a journalist in the late 19th century who was chased out of, I believe it was uh, Nashville, uh, Tennessee, or was it Memphis? For a stand, I think Memphis for a stand against the lynchings, and she yeah. was part of the Garvey movement mm -hmm. as well. And didn't she? She she laid out uh, the know, role the, of white women, and yeah. and and yeah. also how the accusation was that it was African men raping white women when the opposite was the truth. Exactly. It right. was white men who were raping African women at an incredibly horrific rate. You know, and that's something that is wiped out of the history books. But I read a book, a very interesting book, a few years ago on white women mm. who were injected themselves into the Harlem Renaissance, which mm. were like these patrons of the arts and these white women and stuff. But it said in that book that it was a big issue in the African community that white, white women's role in lynchings and other yeah. kinds of terror against yeah. African people, that that was a big issue, which, mm -hmm. we, you know, that's been, been wiped out right. of the history books. Um, and it's, you know, so that white women are, are portrayed as victims right. in this, and that it, but it's not true. And that's, this is, this is the reality. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that we did this, as, as has been said. So, you know, this is, we, have to, we have to take responsibility for this, that we, um, you know, everything, that, you know, that we would want to be part of this government, that we would want to be part of the Democratic Party that's responsible for 
the 100,000 police onto the streets of the African community under Clinton, the crime bill that yep. criminalized so many African people. We're still in prison today for many of them for marijuana or, you know, some kind of drug use, which is legal for white people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to we have to open this up and we have to take responsibility as white women and white men. Okay. Right. The world is watching. Uh -huh. yes. We want to salute Secretary General Allison Haney, uh -huh. Uh -huh. who put in $25, bringing us to $356.50 left to go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's do it. We can do this. All right, so we are at, what, 35% or something like that? 35%. And we need to... Um, we need to get there. We just need six hundred and fifty dollars to go. We mm -hmm. can do this. So just go to blackpowerblueprint.org, use your credit card, use your debit card, and go ahead and and put in twenty five dollars, five dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, as many people have done mm -hmm. for this. Yes. You know, we've raised almost sixty thousand dollars. Overall, this is our, our third kind of phase. We call it phase 2.2 because we're going to go to <laughs> phase three soon. Yes. That, you know, that we are raising resources right now for the, um, one of the things is for the renovation of a fourplex building that the African People's Socialist Party was able to purchase near the Uhuru House in the north side of St. Louis. Um, that is going to be a home an ability for African people coming out of prison who are going to be part of the African Independence Workforce Project um, that's part of the Black Power Blueprint to be able to hire, train and hire Africans coming out of this colonial prison system, the largest prison population in the entire world, yes. at least half of the people in prison in this country are African people, including mm -hmm. African children. Mm -hmm. You know, where they are being raped, where they yeah. are. <laughs> Be, yep. you know, facing violence every single day. And this Black Power Blueprint is in building the Jiko Kitchen, the Uhuru Foods and Pies, which is going to have its national office in St. Louis, it's part of this beautiful building on Goodfellow Avenue near Natural Bridge Road there in St. Louis, a well-known, beautiful art deco building that is um, just gorgeous. It's going to be have new life as a cafe, mm. as a bakery, a community kitchen, and um, a distribution point of Uhuru Foods and Pies and other foods of um, you know, the Uhuru movement. So this is, this is incredible. This is what it goes to. It's really concrete. Yeah. The resources towards the, um, towards this incredible, 20, is a 25 foot flag pole and 25 foot square or flag that red, black, and green flag that has gone up across the street from the Uhuru house that Jesse was talking about that means so much to the African community. They come out and, and yeah. salute it, yeah. bring their children to watch, and um, just see it as representing African freedom and the African nation. Um, that's you know, part of what we've raised money for, what you have given to. Mm -hmm. So this is going to real things. And Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Chatella is there on the ground in St. Louis making these projects just like go at lightning speed. The renovation of the Uhuru House, the uh, tearing down of the buildings across the street that were condemned. That's raised money for that. You gave to this. So $60,000 that we've raised so far is very little for that kind of thing. So right. it's amazing what has been done with that, yeah. but we have to raise a lot more because, mm -hmm. you know, there's many, many, many more projects that have to be built. So, you know, go ahead and put in your resources tonight. We have Drew Arvison from Washington State, $5 tonight. Oh, Drew. Drew, Drew, Drew. That puts us at $355. A remaining is only six hundred and forty-five dollars. So let's let's get there. Let's get down to um, under six hundred, and then under five hundred. Mm -hmm. Let's whittle away. Let's do yes. it. Let's yep. keep doing it. We are going to do this. This is really critical. There's a time. There's a time factor in this yeah. because the resources 
have to are being used for projects every single day believe yep, right. me every single day mm -hmm. and you know we see the victories go to black power blueprint and see the videos that show um, how amazing these projects have been the transformation of these empty buildings that didn't even have yep. a floor that is now the beautiful beautiful Quabaha and Uhuru house where much of the stuff in the Congress of the African People's Socialist Party under whose leadership we are organized um, ha was held just a couple of weeks ago. Go you can go there and see it. So mm -hmm. go event. there the and watch these videos. Yeah. Look at these yes. pictures. Watch the flag going up. There's so much to see. It's, it's just incredible. And okay, check out we, the, oh sorry. Well, we do have a few questions. And mm -hmm. first of all, I just wanted to ask, do we, do we know how many people are watching right now? Can someone say? Twenty on Facebook. Twenty on Facebook. Uh, six on YouTube. Okay, so there's like 33 people watching this. I want to thank everybody who has stuck around for the program up to this point. It's been an incredible program tonight with Chairwoman Penny Hess and all of you being here. And we are uh, making our goal tonight to raise a thousand dollars for the Black Power Blueprint. So if you're still on. We're going to continue raising this money until this program is over. So you might as well go ahead right now to blackpowerblueprint.org. Take out your credit card, your debit card, and go ahead and put in whatever you can. And mm -hmm. if, you're, if you've already put in some, put in a little bit more. Let's all do what we can to get us to 500 so that we can be halfway towards meeting our goal mm -hmm. and celebrate that. So let's go ahead and do it. Raise $1,000 tonight. And I did want to um, mention that we have some questions and comments. And uh, thank you so much for everybody for sending in your questions and comments tonight. And this is from Ngone O, who says, Uhuru Chairwoman Penny Hess, Jesse Neville, and other members of the African People's Solidarity Committee, thank you for your dedication. You give me hope for the future of planet Earth. We will have a new Earth for all. Uhuru. 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 And then the question is, did you know about the six-year-old boy accused of assaulting a white woman when his book bag touched her as he passed? Wow. The community rallied behind the boy falsely accused of sexual assault in the Cornerstone Caroline at, uh, incident. And then, that just that was recent, right? Yes. That just happened. Yes, I did see something on that. So another it just, example. It just keeps going. Yeah. You know, it's still colonialism. And another example was uh, sent in by Johan Bedingfield, who said Hydra Lacey was horrifically lynched by cops because of a white woman in St. Petersburg, Florida, a few years ago. And I do remember that. Uh, there was mm -hmm. it was a white woman who tipped off the cops to where he was mm -hmm. and directed them to his house where they tortured him they handcuffed him tased him and he allegedly managed to get hold of one of their guns and actually four cops died um, whether or not he shot them or they they shot each other will never be known because the mayor at the time Bill Destroyed Foster yeah. bulldozed his house mm -hmm. yeah. at, like they do in Gaza yeah and carted away all of the evidence to a dump site, so which was a, a crime scene. They did mm -hmm. that within minutes of when the shooting happened. But that's another example of colonial violence. They did the yeah. same thing in Vietnam to the villages that they yep. would assault. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they would take bulldozers and grind up all the remains yep. uh, so that there wouldn't be any evidence of the numbers, uh, the genocidal numbers of people resisting for their own land. Um, so it, it's it's overwhelming the mm -hmm. uh, degradation the humiliation that colonialism causes i remember right here in pinellas county a case where a, was it a six-year-old kindergarten yep. student african oh, yeah. young yeah. girl handcuffed yep. for having uh you know what they characterize as a temper tantrum she was standing on a chair or a desk they brought the police in and handcuffed her and took yep. her away and took her and away she and, cried. They and now they that, her. that was shocking at the time but it's it's really it, it was the norm then and yeah. it's almost publicly become the norm now Yep. And, and we had uh, the, the, the case of Marquise McLaughlin right here in St. Pete. Earlier we were talking about Desi Woods, who they wanted to put away, they wanted to possibly give her the death penalty mm -hmm. for defending herself and her friend from being raped by this white guy. Mm -hmm. And then we have now, in 2018, some white guy stalking uh, a parking lot where African people go. Mm -hmm. And uh, because this young man uh, defends his family, from this aggressive, angry white man screaming at his wife or his girlfriend, he's shot dead and he walks with impunity. Yeah. This is colonialism. Mm -hmm. It's absolute impunity to have, the as Chairwoman Penny has said, to have the power of life or death over any African man, woman, or child. 
That's untenable. That's unacceptable. And, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I see on Facebook and, and stuff almost every day, there's white women out there calling the police on African people mm -hmm. for anything. The neighborhood and, watch. Anything right? for, you know, in Oakland, for um, having a barbecue in the park mm -hmm. by Lake Merritt. Um, and I just saw, you know, white women calling the police on an African man in Detroit who was a community gardener and he was in the community garden and the police came to arrest him. I'm just, you know, every day this is part of the continued assault that white women as, you know, key part of the colonizer nation mm -hmm. are participating in. And this is, this is what we're saying, that we're part of, we're the colonizers, we're part of the white nation that got our identity through the enslavement of African people, through the assault on the people on the planet Earth. That's how we got the term white. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't a known thing. That's how we right. became, as the chairman said, European. Yeah. We were warring tribes before that. We were yeah. poor and oppressed in Europe. Yeah. And now, you know, white women have opportunity based on the pedestal on the backs of African people. And I don't want that. Yeah, no. I don't want that. I, I don't want to be anybody's police officer. I don't want to be in the U.S. Army. I don't want to have rights mm -hmm. to kill African people or colonize people on this planet. And I don't think you do either if you're watching this. Mm -mm. This is not what it's about. We want mm -hmm. to be free and liberated from our um, identity yeah. as this that's hated all around the world. Right, you know, exactly. we want to be part of a world that's just, and we don't know how mm -hmm. to do that. We can't do it mm -hmm. because we sit on the pedestal. So anything that we're creating is just for us mm -hmm. at the expense of everybody else. It's part of the spoils of colonialism and, you know, that we can be part of a really genuinely, truly beautiful future. Yes. But it's under the leadership of the African working class and, and a liberated Africa. And that's what I want to be part of. You know, indigenous people still own this land, and they're coming mm -hmm. back to, t to say that. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is their land. The rent is due. We have $25 from Diane Tournay. Oh, the crew with oh, Diane. We held a, Just held a great event. Fantastic, yes. comrade. Salute, Diane. So we've raised 400 and we have 600 to go. All right. We can do this. 600, 600, 600 years. We can do this. We can I, do this. I want to give a shout out to uh, Molly Prawl, one of our new amazing comrades who is uh -huh. tuning in tonight from Australia, who is working with George and other comrades there to build the first ever day of reparations to African people in, wow. in Australia. <laughs> who sent in a statement, Uhuru, thank you. And thank you to comrade Molly, and thank you for being on with us tonight. And we very much look forward to coming to Australia and working with the comrades there to build Absolutely. white solidarity with black power and solidarity with what they refer to as the Aboriginal people of that land struggling for their land and unity with African people everywhere fighting for national liberation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, Ch Chairman Penny, you were talking about how we used to fight each other in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. Hasn't Chairman Omalia Shatella said before that through imperialism, through colonialism, White people have been avoiding dealing with the contradictions uh, we have amongst ourselves between white men and white women, between uh, white bosses and white workers, and we, we, we sort of put colon colonized people in the middle of that and assault colonized people as a way to avoid dealing with uh, some of our own contradictions. I was reminded of that through some of what you were, you were talking about. Well, yeah, or, or just seeking a way to deal with the contradictions by getting it for us right you know and and never discussing the fact that africans are still colonized mm -hmm. you know indigenous people are still facing genocide is still mm -hmm. colonized on their own land mm -hmm. and that never comes up that never comes up so we find our own solutions right mm -hmm. that uh, keeps us you know happy and fat and you know just they're able to live a standard of living that nobody else does mm -hmm. on the whole planet. And um, that's that's why there's the death of despair. Yeah, because there's, I don't see any future in that. Even if you're no. the white ruling class, where does that go? 
because the, the, everything needed for real life is being destroyed. So how, right. how is all that money, all that loot is just sitting there? And where is it going to go? War is not a productive activity. No. Slaughter is and, not a productive activity. The crisis of imperialism, as the chairman says, is bringing about more and more war, a, a state of permanent war. Yeah, we don't even talk about it. Doing. No, right. we don't. It's, it's, it's not considered the war in Iraq anymore. It's just the status quo. Yeah. Yep. Uhuru, well, I just wanted to say that we are at 8.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that's a little bit over uh, the time that we wanted to continue having this webinar. However, I would like to uh, propose that we close out as soon as we raise half of our goal tonight, because I think the rest of it will come in within the next 24 hours, as often does happen. People go yeah, on there. Blackpowerblueprint.org. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, no, I just am uniting with that that we should raise another hundred dollars. Let's do it. So we can do that. So everybody mm -hmm. here, everyone watching, even if you put in another ten, mm -hmm. you know, we would make our goal half our goal tonight, so that we can make the other half within the next twenty-four hours. If yeah, if or four people put in twenty-five dollars, or five people put in twenty. Mm -hmm. Just let's go ahead and do it. Blackpowerblueprint.org. We can do this. I'd like to add ten dollars to right, my uh, uh, true. True. tonight to make that thirty. Here's and a statement mm -hmm. from Comrade Molly, who says, "Salute to all your work and that of the whole African People's Socialist Party to allow me to do this work. White Australia owes reparations too." Comrade. <laughs> 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 Very true. Wow. This truly is an international movement. It truly is the revolutionary vanguard of the world, and it truly is a privilege to be part of it. And we truly want to give a salute to Ruby Gittleson, who just put in $3. Right. Ruby, which, including Jamie Simpson's 10 here, brings us to 430 So All 70 right. more to go. We just need 70 more dollars. Mads, 50! Oh, right. Mads! Mads. 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 Fantastic. 480. 480. There we go. Just need 20 more 20 dollars more here. This is the culture of reparations. Yeah. You know, this, this is not uh, charity. This is, we, we, as Chair Jesse said at a recent day of reparations to African people event, we are not the white saviors. You know, we are not the mm -hmm. white missionaries. We don't do this on our own terms when it, when it feels right. We do this based on a very concrete schedule of the anti colonial movement in the African People's Socialist Party. All right. Uhuru. You're right, <laughs> but we have Jim Garrett from Boston. Jim $50. Garrett. $50. There we go. So right. now, now that we're at 530, I'm tempted to say our goal should be 600. Yeah, we got to get this coming. <laughs> Blackpowerblueprint.org. We just need 70 more now. Why don't we make some announcements, and while we're doing that, yes. you can continue contributing reparations at blackpowerblueprint.org to bring us to 600. That sounds Great like a good idea. plan, Jesse. Uhuru. So um, October, I'm sorry, our next webinar is going to be November 20th. That's Tuesday, November 20th. 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and the topic is the truth about Thanksgiving and victory to the indigenous people. So don't miss that. The next webinar, November 20th, that's Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here. Jesse, I believe you have an announcement to make. All right, so while you're going to blackpowerblueprint.org and getting us to $600 tonight by making a contribution towards the Black Power Blueprint, I would like to tell you about the Days of Reparations to African People campaign. This campaign, we're in the middle of it right now, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, four events have happened, incredible events, as I mentioned earlier, that raise the deepest questions in the white community about the stance of solidarity with African liberation. And Chairman Amali Shatella and other leading members of the African People's Socialist Party, including Akile Anai, uh, Yejide Oremila, uh, Akile of the director of Agiprop, Yejide Oremila, the president of the African National Women's Organization, um, and um, Kobina Bantushango, the Southeast Regional Representative of the party who spoke in Huntsville. These are the speakers along with Chairwoman Penny Hess. And we have events coming up on November 5th. There will be a viewing party in Asheville, North Carolina, as well as a live event in Philadelphia, followed by an event the next night, November 6th, in New York. Two days later, well, actually, the next day, there will be an event that we're going to have details out about soon where Chairman Amali Shatella will be speaking at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston in front of Turner's slave ship painting. And we'll be discussing that. Um, that's going to be very interesting. People will definitely want to tune in for that. And then on the next night, November 8th, is Boston's Day of Reparations to African People. Mm -hmm. The following week, November 13th, will be in, I always get these confused, Portland and then Seattle. OK, we'll be in Portland 
for the day of the first day of reparations to African people. Shout out Mads and all the amazing comrades yeah. that are making it happen. Yeah. 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 And Seattle, shout out to Marissa and everybody there who's making yes. their day of reparations happen Seattle. the next night. And then, I forgot to mention, in between all of that, on November 10th, as I mentioned earlier, will be the uh, Perth, Australia Day of Reparations to African people. So, all right, Perth! Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Fantastic. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations. I'm going to stop right there because... We're over $10,000 on blackpowerblueprint.org. All right. Uh -huh. Very good. Thank you for that announcement. Thank you. And so, so basically what we want to do is get to 10070 because you're going to go on blackpowerblueprint.org and get us to 600 tonight. We need 70 more to do that. And salute everybody who has put in so far. Uh -huh. to all of you for your magnificent stance of solidarity. Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace, and Reparations will be hosting its annual March on the White House, yes. November 3rd, and a Gotta conference. Absolutely, we will there. be there. Get on a bus, get on a van, do what you gotta do, get a flight if you haven't already, or drive there, it's worth it. You yes. get to march on the White House under the leadership of the Black is Back Coalition, which is led by Chairman Omalia Shatella. And this year, the theme of the march is, this is, which is the ninth annual march, I believe, that they've held, the Black is Back Coalition has held, so. if not more, yeah, if not right. more. Yeah. And this one is called, There Is No Peace, Africa Is At War, U.S. To The World, Comply or Die. So join under the leadership of the real anti-war movement, the real anti-imperialist movement, which is the Black Power Movement, the Black is Back Coalition. So that's going to be... Um, blackisbackcoalition.org for more information. Let me turn it back over to Jamie. And wow. we have Molly Prow from Australia, right? All right, yes, that's right. Um, just put in $25, so we're uh -huh. at 500, $555, so we only have $45 more to go. All right. Incredible go stance, Molly. In. Thank you so much. To get to 600 Yes. All right, 45 to go. All right, we can do it, comrades. Keep it up, keep it up, blackpowerblueprint.org. Uh, we wanted to let you know that there is uh, Giving Tuesday. This is the Tuesday, November 27th. It's the day after Cyber Monday, as it's known, the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, you can donate. You can help to build the Black Power Blueprint, and here's four ways that you can be part of the Black Power Blueprint's Giving Tuesday strategy. One, donate on Giving Tuesday. That's November 27th at blackpowerblueprint.org, just like you have tonight, so generously. Two, host a Giving Tuesday fundraiser. So you can sign up on Eventbrite. That's Giving Tuesday for blackpowerblueprint.eventbrite.com. You can win your friends and family to donate. And three, you can celebrate a birthday, your birthday, by hosting a fundraiser for the Black Power Blueprint on Facebook or offline. And you can get more information on that at blackpowerbirthdays at gmail.com. And four, you can join the Uhuru Pie Brigade. Be part of baking and selling 10,000 Uhuru Pies this year. This is gonna be a banner year in all sectors of the African People's Socialist Party. And uh, that's uh, Uhuru Pies is part of the African People's Education and Defense Fund. Board president is Deputy Chair Ona Zine Yeshitela. <laughs> so Uhuru. be part of Giving Tuesdays and Uhuru. birthday fundraisers. Uhuru. Right on. All right. All right. So any other uh, announcements? Any last words before we say goodnight to our well, we raised five hundred and fifty-five dollars, so we just need forty-five to oh. get to six hundred. And I think we have another announcement. We have an announcement that I think will take just long enough to make for you to put in the last forty-five dollars. Yeah, so come on, uh, gotta do it. Here we go. Thank you to stage manager Comrade Jackson for bringing that Ooh. in for us. Here you go, James. Oh, thank you. So. Black Power on the rise in St. Petersburg. Yes, don't yes, miss this. Yes. This is going to be a really oh, powerful goodness. event. Absolutely. I'm remiss for not having mentioned it earlier. November 11th, 3 to 6 p.m. here at the Uhura House in St. Petersburg, Florida, 1245 18th Avenue South. Join us to celebrate you, the community that helped to double the Black Power 96.3 FM radio's coverage area by 
uh, tuning in and contributing to raise the station's broadcast tower to the height of 70 feet. Wow. Chairman Omalia Shatella of the African People's Socialist Party and leader of the Uhuru Movement will be there and he will be keynote speaker. So you will be able to meet the Black Power 96 show hosts, the uh, enjoy live performances from local artists, and tour the Black Power 96 studio. There will also be a free karamu, that's African feast, and Uhuru Pie Tastings by Uhuru Foods and Pies, who wants you to get involved with the aforementioned 10,000 pie sales campaign to support black economic development and self-reliance. You can RSVP for this today by going to blackpoweronthe-rise.eventbrite.com. And again, uh -huh. that's this uh, sun that's Sunday, November 11th from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Uhuru House, 1245 18th Avenue South. Uhuru. Uhuru. And Uhuru. before we close out, and while we are going on to blackpowerblueprint.org and each putting in whatever we can, a little $5 donation here and there actually goes a long way. So if you yeah. can go in, put in $5 uh, to get us to the goal of 600 tonight, we're $45 yeah. away. So that's how many people doing five dollars each? I don't know. I'm gonna put in five dollars. No. There we go. More. Chairman Penny so Hess is gonna do another five. Just need forty dollars. Forty more. Forty more. Go ahead and. Just... Two people doing twenty. Yeah. That's it. So yeah. while you're doing that, I want to make a call to any white people watching this. Drew if... Arvison, five more dollars. Okay, Drew. 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 Here we go. Okay. That brings us to five sixty-five, including Chairwoman Penny Hess's five. So thirty-five dollars left 35. to go. Thirty-five. Thirty-five dollars left to go. So yeah, while you're about doing that, a dollar that, a day for a month. There you go. It's nothing. So while you're doing that, if you're white and you're watching and you're not yet a member of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, I would like to make a call for you to join, become involved, get active, and start organizing today with the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. Go to uhurusolidarity.org, and wherever you're located, even if you are the only person in your city who's ever heard of this. We'll schedule a meeting with you. We'll get you linked up with other people in the region. And you can go from being someone who has no idea what they're doing to being a seasoned organizer by tomorrow. So start working with us. We have the Reparations Challenge Campaign, Building the Culture of Reparations to African People, where you can do anything. You can host a, a poetry night, a DJ dance thing, <laughs> a dance party. Um, these are all things people actually do. Make you can do, yeah, a chocolate making workshop. Uh, we had a Harry Potter trivia night. Yoga. Yoga for reparations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Literally anything you already Surfing. like to do. Surfing. Mm -hmm. Somebody made their own laundry detergent for reparations. Like mm -hmm. literally anything can become an act of reparations if you bring white people together and charge money for it that goes towards the work of the Black Power Blueprint and the African People's Socialist Party. So it's an amazing movement. It's an amazing campaign. It's exhilarating to be a part of it. It's thrilling, absolutely thrilling. The most positive thing on the planet Earth and the way out of the death of despair that awaits any white person who does not get on the right side of history. So join the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. Go to uhurusolidarity.org and join today. Uhuru. Mm -hmm. And to let you know that you can also join the Black Power Blueprint Reparations Campaign, which is Absolutely. very much part of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. And you can go to join at blackpowerblueprint.org. Yes. And, you know, we need, we need grant writers. We need mm -hmm. um, social media experts. Um, you know, we need all kinds of things, anything. We need environmentalists because we need to have uh, solar panels on all the buildings and structures of the Black Power Blueprint. That's right. not something just for white people. African people need that. The, you know, the cost of, of the um, electricity and, and gas and the fossil fuels and whatever, even just the cost of that is prohibitive for a building. And, mm -hmm. you know, we need to turn that over. That's part of yes. reparations, yeah. that kind of technology. You know, there's just anything that you can do, you can be part of this anything, any way that we function in the white community, we have social wealth and we have to turn it over. And it's so exciting to do that and to win people in those communities. I also wanted to say, you know, think how exciting it is to be part of a growing movement of white people on the forward side of history all around the world now. Yeah. Australia, yeah. Seattle, Portland, we have members in Canada, we have members in Norway and Sweden and Poland and U UK and you know it's just growing it's growing it's spanning the globe and 
one of our goals for this coming year is to build a branch of USM in occupied Zania, yes. aka South Africa. Yes. Probably um, around the Johannesburg area where the diamonds were stolen from and other minerals. The African People's Socialist Party has a unit, a branch there in, in what's called Hauteng Province, which is where um, Johannesburg is, is located. And probably that's where we're going to be because that is the richest province in South Africa mm -hmm. because it's where all the diamonds are. And we're going to be rebuilding our campaign called All Diamonds Are Blood Diamonds and calls on white people to turn over their diamond jewelry yeah. to, um, to this movement, turn it back over. And then if you know if you want to, you can buy it back. <laughs> you can buy it back with a certificate that it is a liberated diamond signed by Black Star Industries and the African Revolution. Isn't that exciting? Great idea. So, you know, we're going to be doing this and talking to people about this all over the world. Um, and this is a growing thing. This is on the ascendancy. This mm -hmm. is where white people can be. And to just know that, I mean, I don't know Molly and I don't know George in Australia, but I know you. Yeah, I exactly. know you. You are part of of our movement, you know. Um, I mean, we could you could just walk in this room and yep. we would it would be like we knew you forever. So this is part of something that is joining the future, something that's bigger than our stomachs and pocketbooks and celebrity news and fake yeah. news and all the different <laughs> things that we're talking about. This mm -hmm. is joining African people under the leadership of African people who are building a new world. A right. liberated Africa in which all human beings can live, no one at the expense of anybody else. Oh, for real. For real. Perfect way to close it out, I think. Well, we still need 45. 35 more dollars? 35 more dollars. Go ahead. It's, it's, it's going gonna, gonna to happen. It's going to happen. So Just are we... go ahead. Put it in. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> all right. We got a little uh, challenge here. Eight, in eight minutes, can we raise $35? Yes. Because we can't go past 9 o'clock tonight. We appreciate right. everyone. We still have 30-something people watching. You're all, all right. you're all still on because you want to see us reach the goal. So. That's right. So we appreciate That's you right. for sticking around. <laughs> and we encourage you to go to blackpowerblueprint.org and put in whatever you can, even if it's a dollar. You know, right. Whatever you can put in, it makes a difference. It, it adds up. Yeah. So I want to encourage everybody to go into blackpowerblueprint.org. Let's raise the last $35 towards our goal tonight. Yeah. Let's see. What costs $35? Um, a meal out? Yeah, just there you the go. Um, yeah. And just going, um, going to a movie and getting mm -hmm. popcorn. Yeah, that's definitely The popcorn bad. alone is yeah. like $20. <laughs> yep. And the quality of movie is uh, a lot definitely lower than what you'd see at, say, in a Hurry Solidarity Movement Film Festival or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, right. I mean, you know, and I mean, I don't smoke cigarettes, but do you know how much cigarettes cost? Here? I haven't checked it. Two packs like probably run you thirty-five dollars. Yeah, I know. Wow. It's like fifteen dollars. Really? Wow. Wow. You know, to give yourself cancer, you yeah. Right. Look how much money you pay. There's so many right. other opportunities to get cancer under colonialism. It's everywhere. Why right. would you need to smoke? I don't drink lattes, but what is a latte about seven dollars? Um, well, if you get like a lavender, nice little. But I would, you know, your average latte is going to run you about four, four or five dollars okay, for a run-of-the-mill, you know. And, but you have, but the thing about a latte, you have to have it every day because you think, oh God, I can't oh, face well, this day yeah. without a latte. And you, there you are at Starbucks getting your latte. Yep. Five dollars a day. We're yep. just talking about one dollar a day. Exactly. Just go ahead and put that in. Thirty-five dollars. Exactly. Let go of the caffeine. The adrenaline of the African Revolution will keep you awake. That's I right. promise you, you don't that. need it. We right. don't need it. Keeps us going. Right. <laughs> but we do need dual and contending power in the hands of the African working class. And you can help make that happen by going to blackpowerblueprint.org and yes. making whatever donation you're able to make or suggesting it to a friend or family member who maybe has not donated yet. This is our opportunity to get on the right side, the forward side of history. And you know, you can also sign up for this Giving Tuesday thing. Yes. And one of the slogans that we want to create for it is make Giving Tuesday a day of reparations. Yes. There you go. Because it's not about charity. No. And you know, this is, that's what that whole theme of it is, yeah. is charity. 
But uh, which it's, always it's puts a the person deal. who's the charity giver in the yeah, center exactly. in a really right. kind of exactly. dishonest way. It's yeah. not ours to give. Right. That's right. Right. So, you know, join this Giving Tuesday though. It's a great way to get family and yes. friends and high school mates or whatever college alumni to to give yeah mm -hmm. um to contribute reparations and mm -hmm. the birthday fundraisers are amazing yes. so yeah. jesse call up in seattle well, jesse call raised about what 25 or 2600 dollars yep. deputy wow. chair onazine and chairman omalai chatella whose birthdays are on the same day october 9th yes. raised what about 12 or 1300 dollars yes. for wow. their birthday I mean, this is, that's so great. It's just such a great fundraiser. And you can go on Facebook. It's really easy to do. You hook it up to APEDF, mm -hmm. and which is a nonprofit listed under Facebook, and, and there you go. You just put it out there, and you'll be surprised. Yeah. We have about thank four you. minutes left before we close out tonight, and I really want to thank you, the person who is currently <laughs> on blackpowerblueprint.org, taking your time entering your credit card i understand sometimes i type it in wrong too and then it says decline and i freak out because i'm like what i have money in there and then i realize i did the expiration date wrong so i go back and do it again so i know that's what you're doing right now to put in that last 35 dollars so we can close out tonight at 600 and i just really want to appreciate you and everybody who's watched up to this point and this amazing campaign and this amazing program and um, we actually have 40 dollars <laughs> We All have right. forty dollars. All right, cut Oops. this. Five more for me My then. Math is <laughs> no, I think that was because I don't think that was including your five. Oh, that's why. Okay. So and Jamie just okay, Jamie was five. Now we're at thirty. So. We're just a thirty. All right, thirty more to go. Thirty, 30 more to go. go. Come on, we can do this. Yeah, we can do this. this. We can do this. And you. What better thing? And what are you? Yeah. You know, it's just going to go to nothing. Right. It's going to go to some terribly fattening thing. That we <laughs> right. Grocery store, unhealthy thing, I would say. Or yeah. a, di a diversion of some sort to get our minds off of the incredibly oppressive system in which we live in complicity unless we stand and be counted on the side of reparations to African people. Uh, it's, a, it's a terrible way to live. That's right. Just in, in, in constant uh, despising of colonial violence and arrogance. And it can't be despised out of, out of existence. It has to be overturned. That's right. And there has to be another structure there for people to live. And that's exactly what the African People's Socialist Party is doing with the Black Power Blueprint that you can support at blackpowerblueprint.org Blueprint. tonight. All right. OK, so we just need 30 more to go. 30 and in two minutes, $15 two a minute minutes. Okay. before we close out. <laughs> 15 dollars a minute. dollars <laughs> a minute. <laughs> so we, again, appreciate everyone who has held in here and uh, donated tonight, supported tonight, uh, expressed your material solidarity with African liberation and with the liberation of colonized and oppressed peoples throughout the world. And yeah. I, want to, I want to appreciate Israel Finn, who put in $25. Oh, uh, that's what we're talking about. That means... We have five dollars left to go. Five, and we have a hand. Could you, right. could you say your name for the live stream? Kyle. Uhuru Kyle. Uhuru Kyle. And Uhuru to Israel, who's in Portland. Uhuru. Uhuru. So that brings us to six hundred dollars tonight All towards right. the Black Power Blueprint. Uhuru, Uhuru. and salute to everybody who made this happen. Uhuru. Uhuru. I just really want to thank everybody for participating tonight. We're going to be at Black is Back um, Coalition demonstration at the White House uh, starting at Malcolm X Park on Saturday with a conference. On Sunday, you can check it out at blackisbackcoalition.org. And, you know, we call on white people to be there. Then on Monday night, we're going to be in Philadelphia for the Day of Reparations in Philadelphia. And Tuesday, we're going to be at the in New Boston York. Museum. Tuesday, New York. No, we're going to be in Wednesday, New York. Wednesday, Boston. Brooklyn, in Brooklyn. Yes, in Brooklyn. Yes, in Brooklyn. And then Wednesday, we'll be at the Boston Museum. Thursday, we will be Day of Reparations in Boston. Yes. 
So if you're in any of those places, please come out or check us out at uhurusolidarity.org. Uh -huh. so. Excellent. And uh, for everyone watching, we will, we will be back with this webinar November 20th. That's a Tuesday at 7 p.m. The topic is truth, the truth about Thanksgiving and victory to the indigenous people. And uh, before that, though, November 11th, that's Sunday, November 11th, uh, please come out to Black Power Rising to celebrate raising a 70-foot radio tower for the Black Power 96.3 radio station and hear Chairman Omalia Shatella as the keynote speaker, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. November 11th at the Uhuru House. And don't forget about Giving Tuesdays. That's November 27th, the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So again, Uhuru. thank you to everyone who's thank watched so our incredible much. Chairwoman Penny Hess. Yes. I'm going to give a round of applause. Our keynote speaker tonight. Yes. Yes. Absolutely to you, comrade, Thanks. and to Jesse. Just been Thank a great, you. great program tonight, and yes. all of you who have participated. Thank you. Unity through. Revolutions. Revolutions. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.